My name is Mike Meharry. I'm the editor of shiftgold.com, the news section. You can find my work over at shiftgold.com slash news. And I thought I would spend a little bit of time today talking about silver. We talk about gold a lot, and silver tends to get lost in the spotlight. I kind of call silver the uh, unwanted stepchild of gold, but there's some really interesting things going on in the silver market right now that I want to touch on. Most significantly, right now, silver has never been cheaper in 5,000 years of human history. And when I say cheaper, I mean in relation to gold. There's a very important thing that we talk about a lot when it comes to silver and gold, and that's the silver-gold ratio. And in simple terms, that's just the amount of silver that it takes to buy one ounce of gold. Today, the silver-gold ratio is just under 112 to 1. So it takes 112 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. 112 to 1. Actually, it's over that. It's closer to 113 to 1, just under 113 to 1. This is really significant because historically, that ratio has been closer to 40 to 50 to 1. So when we're talking 113 to 1, we're talking way out of whack. Uh, in fact, we hit a record for the silver-gold ratio in March. It went all the way up to 120 to 1. That tells us that silver is way over underpriced compared to gold, or you can look at it the other way, gold is way overpriced as compared to silver. Now, this is really significant because historically, like I said, we've had a, a 40 to 50 to 1 ratio. At some point, history tells us that ratio is going to close back up and come closer to normal. Now, if you go over to shiftgold.com slash news, I wrote an article about this. Uh, I think I published it on Monday, and I actually go into some of the history of the silver-gold ratio. Uh, back in ancient times, it was actually closer to 10 to 20 to 1. And then as uh, silver became less used as a monetary metal, uh, it that, that spread a little bit. But like I said, when you start seeing ratios of, of 100 to 1, 120 to 1, that's way out of whack. Uh, in fact, last year we were talking about uh, the silver-gold ratio being very wide, uh, even at 80 to 1, and we were talking about silver being on sale, and that's only expanded in recent weeks. So let's talk a little bit about silver. How is it different than gold? Well, the main difference is silver is much more of an industrial metal. About 60% of silver's demand comes from industrial applications. Back in the olden days, that was primarily in the photo industry. It was used as a backing on film uh, and, and an integral part of uh, photo processing. Today, obviously, we have digital photography, so we don't have nearly the uh, use in the photo industry. But silver is still widely used in electronics and telephones. Um, it's being increasingly used in solar energy production. So there are a lot of industrial uses for silver. That makes it a little bit more volatile, volatile than gold. In fact, it's a lot more volatile than gold. It's much more subject to ups and downs in the economy. Obviously, when economies slow down, you have less demand for industrial production of all kinds, and the industrial demand for silver will tend to drop. But at its core, silver is still a monetary money. And if you look at it over time, it tends to track relatively consistent with gold. When gold is in a bull market, silver tends to go into a bull market as well. Investors use silver as uh, an investment, as a monetary metal, as a hedge against inflation, just like they do gold. I also personally like silver because it is much easier to barter with. Uh, it would be much more useful if there was a total currency collapse. Uh, you know, it's easier to spend silver coins than it is to spend gold. So there's there's actually some advantages as uh, with silver as a monetary metal. Now, the supply-demand dynamics for silver right now are actually pretty good as well. Uh, you know, just taking away all of the issues we have with the coronavirus lockdowns and the economy. The, uh, the demand for silver last year was up just slightly, uh, even with the trade war, which really put a damper on industrial production. But investment uh, demand for silver was actually way up last year. It was up about 12%. And so that pushed overall demand up slightly. On the supply side, mine output has been dropping for the last four years. So we've had a decreasing 
supply and increasing demand. Uh, I think going forward, as we look at the economy slowing down due to the government lockdowns with coronavirus, we're certainly going to see industrial demand for silver fall off. But I think investment demand is going to really skyrocket. And we've seen that actually in the bullion market where we've had a shortage of silver coins, a shortage of silver bars, uh, very high premiums on these products right now because they're just very, very difficult to come by. So we have very good supply demand dynamics going on with the silver market. We have a extreme spread in the silver gold ratio. That would indicate, historically speaking, that this is a really good time to get into silver. Like I said, it is extremely cheap relative to gold right now. It is essentially silver on sale. And if historic trends come to pass, then almost certainly either gold will have to uh, drop significantly or silver will have to go up significantly in order to make that gap, that silver-gold ratio, come closer to its historical norm. I think it's highly unlikely that gold is going to drop significantly in the next year or so, given the amount of money that the Federal Reserve is pumping into the economy, the amount of uh, money the government is borrowing and inserting into the economy. It is an inflationary environment. Inflationary environment is good for gold. And it's good for silver as well. Interesting fact, silver generally outperforms gold during a gold bull market. And we saw this back in 2008. Uh, when 2008 first started happening, when we first started seeing things unwind, when the stock market first started to crash, the, uh, the price of silver dropped like 56%, whereas the price of gold dropped about 26%. This was in from early 2008 to the end of that year. Once the Federal Reserve stimulus started kicking in, we saw gold rally to its highest level ever, around $1,900 an ounce. Uh, that was about a 26% increase, or 56% increase, if, uh, if I'm wrong. Trying to do numbers off the top of my head isn't always wise. But uh, there was a significant gain in gold from the beginning of 2009 through 2011. Silver outperformed gold. It actually raised like 406% over that same time period. So silver just really boomed. It went up uh, in, in, in price exponentially. And uh, so, you know, if those historical trends hold to pass, I would expect gold to rally over the next couple of years as we see the impacts of all of this Federal Reserve monetary printing, all of the inflation, inflation that's in the economy. And I would expect silver to rally as well and perhaps outperform gold as it has in other gold bull markets. So really good outlook for silver in my opinion. Now, if you want to learn how to profit from this, if you want to take advantage of silver on sale, I highly recommend talking to a shift gold precious metal specialist. They can look at your individual situation. They can look at your portfolio and kind of give you an idea of how you might be able to benefit from this uh, particular dynamic we have in the silver and gold markets. Uh, it may be wise to sell some gold and exchange it for silver at this point. Uh, but again, this is something that you would want to talk to uh, a shift gold special precious metal specialist about and uh, get their expert opinion and really look at your own personal portfolio and your own personal situation. But I think overall, we have a very strong outlook for gold, both in the supply and demand dynamics and in the fact that we have a uh, significantly out of whack silver gold ratio. So check out silver. You can get more information by calling Shift Gold, talking to one of those precious metal specialists at 1-888-GOLD-160, or you can shoot them an email at info at shiftgold.com. And you can keep up with the work that I'm doing over at Shift Gold News. It's shiftgold.com slash news. And uh, I write at least two articles every single day over there uh, outlining what's going on with the Fed, what's going on with the federal government, uh, summarizing Peter Schiff's podcasts, and really just trying to keep a, a thumb on the pulse of what's going on in the gold and silver market. So check that out, shiftgold.com slash news. Make sure you follow us on social media, of course, here on Facebook. Also on YouTube, we have a YouTube channel, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, all of those places you can find us. And uh, we really appreciate the support. And thank you for watching. Have a great afternoon.